open up your Bibles in Colossians 3.10. Everyone who should look at your children, they're opening the Bible. The Bible is not seeing your children. So, ask uh, the young ones to carry the Bible. Okay, please read. All at the same time. And then, put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge, after the image of him that created him. Let's open Revelation 10.7. Even though we have power, we should use the Bible to open it up. There's a self-group uh, reporting in the province. They didn't open the, they didn't look at the tracks anymore because they're looking at the PowerPoint. You have to have your own copy. You have to stand on your own ground. Revelation 10 7, let's all read at the same time. But in the days of the voice of the seventh angel, when he shall begin to sound, the mystery of God should be finished. As he, As he had endured the servants, the prophets. The prophet. Let's all pray. So look at your children if their eyes are shut. Are shut. Let's bow down our heads. Lord, we thank thee today as we come to fellowship that presence. Yes, Lord, we know the days are short and you have given us signs. For those of us whose bridal garments are not yet ready, Lord, convict us our hearts in this progressive ministry that we may as, uh, admonish one another, we may encourage, exhort one another, that we may be strong and uh, we are uh, in that thy presence, uh, sweet savor, aroma in thy sight. So Lord, bless the hearts of each and every one right now. And if there may be sins de deliberate or uh, not deliberate, Lord, uh, things that are unworthy to be called by thy name, cleanse us, Lord. Lord, forgive us, Lord. Yes. Make us worthy to carry thy word in the last days. Lord, these things we ask and pray in the mighty name of thy beloved Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Okay, get that. Here you go. Give God the again. Okay, so uh, we are discussing. First, um, Revelation 10.7. Will be a very long discussion. I might not finish. So let's start first with Colossians 3:10. This is the creation of God in Jesus Christ. Now there are many scriptures. Uh, most Trinitarians and uh, even some oneness would not believe this scripture pertaining to the Son. Now first let's. Let's give the uh, uh, meaning of this verse. Put on the new man. Uh, by the way, have your children take notes, okay? Look at your children, they're taking notes. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. This new man is conforming to the image of two hymns. Mark down the two hymns. The first hymn Created the other him. Get the picture? So we, who is the first him? Who is the second him? Yes. And we are to be conformed to the image of the original him. Right. So write it down in your notes. And hopefully you can uh, objectively report in the series portion. The first him is in Genesis 1. 20. 27, 26. Let us make man in our image. Who spoke? Who spoke? Sister uh, uh, Yana, who spoke? 
Brother Rapra, Sister Irene, Sister Jaya, who spoke? Take a guess. Is it God or Jesus Christ? God. Rap Rap. God or Jesus Christ? You're sure? <laughs> so, so, it's understandable, it's very obvious, whether Trinitarian or one, as they will admit it was God who spoke after our image. He was the primary image. The secondary image, to whom was He talking to? Was He talking to angels? Just one application for that. If the Pentecostal Dictionary is still up there, you can look up the oneness. They have two explanations for Genesis 1, 26. Let us make man. The us, there are groups of oneness that believe they are angels. The other us, there are a fringe group of oneness that believe it is Jesus Christ in the laws of God. Now, when I was in my previous church, I only believed the angel version. I heard from other end time groups when I was in the religious that it was Jesus Christ. But I never understood the logo, so I rejected it. And look, why is Jesus Christ there? Was he previously existing in the past? Or is Jesus Christ in the mind of God in the beginning as the Word of God? So, today, I, uh, since God revealed to me the parallelism, multiple application of Genesis chapter 1, now I realize what scripture could convey a lot of meanings? There's a lot of hidden revelation in just one statement that's written there. And we have to realize that we should never stop meditating the Word of God because God could reveal many things. The fact that there are many different groups having uh, expanded their revelation to different versions. Of course, they're only polite. But the fact that they could means there are many revelations hidden from the same scriptures that we read. Sometimes people, some denominations read to the forsake assembly of yourself, but they never notice the cell grouping there. So here in Genesis 1.26, I realize Genesis 1.26 does not only convey the angels having the image of God. If the angels could have the image of God, how much more the son? How much more the bride? Did you see yourself in that verse? If it could grow from the basic teachings, of course, they are going to give instructions to the of them. Each and every one of us should share the basic teachings already. So we could move on to perfection. And what is... Uh, what is the sense of moving on to the deeper things of God? With the basic things you don't understand yet. It will be nothing. Your fellowship will be nothing. We are here to feast upon the Word of God. We are not here just to socialize. So we should focus on our family, focus on our parents. Are they being involved in sharing during break time? I'm talking about the break time. That's your part of the ministry. Does it think the ministry is only for us? It's also for every one of us. And when during break time, it is your part to do the ministry to others. Do not rely only on one person or a few, several persons. It's all of you, whatever level it is. From the basic to the deeper level of understanding. So just write it down. We don't have much time left. First, there's the angels. The angels represent the bride. Angels means messenger. And each one of us are messenger. Did you know after resurrection, you will be like the angels in heaven? You're no longer focused on this day life. You're focused on the spiritual things of God. You're the messengers of God. The angels in heaven is our angelophony. It represents us. So if God was talking to angels, God was talking to us. That's the right way of applying partner 
Rose's uh, version of We Were There. Okay. So we were there in the beginning. We have some scriptures for that. I don't know. I forgot the verse. Maybe you can contribute. Christ said, You were with me in the beginning. You know that verse? Aside from the fact that he, the, the apostles were with Christ during his ministry, the beginning of his ministry, he could also be referring to in the beginning was the word. You were there. It was not just Christ. It was Christ and the bride church. Now let's go to Christ. If God was talking to Christ in the Logos form, that Logos is in the church ages. Now, we open the church ages here. Could you flash the church ages here, Brother Bena? Look at the church ages. Uh, you'll notice that uh, for 2,000 years that Christ was up in heaven mediating for our sins. This is the period of time between the fifth day or sixth day, 5,000th year, the 6,000th year, that God is speaking to Christ. Could you focus on that uh, should that picture here. Focus on that uh, the image up there. Christ at the center of the church ages in the middle. Look at Genesis 1 26. It's between the fifth day and the sixth day. Between the fifth thousand year and the six thousand year of human creation week. The from God was talking to Christ. Let us make man in our image. And there's no contradiction. The beginning of the creation of God is not there in the time of Eden. Not in the time of the creation of the universe. The beginning of the creation of God was in the love of God, which is Christ. And when it was manifested, it was in this time. In this time, such a time as this. The church ages. Where a man could be made in the image of Christ. So before... The church ages, during the Old Testament, there was no uh, resurrection, there was no redemption, it was just all a promise. So creation was not yet fully in the image of God. Do you think all the Old Testament saints, in their weaknesses, in their shortcomings, they're completely in the image of God? They just... Uh, foreshadow they had a typology of the image of God but the image of God is still to come which is the first form of God now we were in Colossians 3.10 right let's go to Colossians 1.15 yeah. and I want everyone uh, please read uh, Sister Jaya and you can after you read you can appoint others so get the microphone Colossians 1.15 Every one of you, the rest of you, open up your Bibles. Take your children to open up their Bibles. Sister Jaya, lead the way. Everyone, lead, uh, read also alongside Sister Jaya. Okay. Read alongside her. Who is the beginning of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Now, take note of the firstborn. He was not just not just first born, but he caused the creation of God. Without him was not anything made that was made. He was the first born during the church ages. He was the first born from the dead. Now go back, uh, go back to the church ages. Uh, let's view it on the full scale, where the crucifixion could be seen. I could write it here. Starting from the crucifixion until his resurrection, he was the firstborn. What kind of firstborn? Of course, many times some others will be from great interpret firstborn. Not they're saying part of those being born, part of the creature, firstborn of all creation. He was not part of creation. Christ was not created. But here you can see firstborn from the dead. Did Christ die? No. Did Christ die? Sister Jai, uh, Brother Rakab, did Christ die? Yes. 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 Okay. If Christ died, then you are sure Christ was part of those from the dead. Colossians 1.18. Please read for us. Colossians 
messages, false versions of the proof. If you could not contend, even though you have memorized the proof, it is nothing. That's no foundation. That's why it's very important to be very So that you're really connected to Christ. You're not connected to a man. You're not connected to a system. So those who could be sufferable or tolerable to be temporarily robots are our children. And parents have the responsibility to train their children. If you neglect that responsibility, then you make them a robot. You're a robot in the church, a robot in the world. That's a sad reality. Okay, let's get back to the image. Colossians pretend. Uh, put on the demand which is renewed in knowledge. If your knowledge is renewed, you become a new man. Even at the beginning of accepting, really accepting Christ by being Berean, or having Berean amendments, you will have received knowledge. There's something in you that sparked within you that turned the corner in your life where you understand it very lightly, shallow understanding or you understand it much more deeper. There must be something that turned your life. Some point in time where in your point of no return. So that is renewing in knowledge. You say renew, is it one time or is it for the rest of your life? Is it one time, Sister Jaya, or for the rest of your life? The rest of your life. Did we say that? One time or for the rest of your life? Let's shout it out. One time or rest of our life? Rest of our life. Let's shout it much more louder. For the rest of our lives. For the rest of our lives. I will follow you, Jesus. I will follow you, Jesus. Because uh, our religious worship as a Catholic are mostly misunderstood that we have worshipped God already because we attend the church. It's for the rest of our lives, even in our homes. Even we are riding a jeep, going to work in our family, with our friends. Or if you're temporarily at school, your parents have no other plans to bring it to the homes. Study. While you are in school, if you are bereaved, you should be worshiping God every moment of your life. Every chance you get, you testify. That's the thing you don't study, you don't work anymore. Okay. Now, if you go to the context, uh, Brother Man, you'll see God is in the equation. God could not be out of the equation. So, Renewed in the knowledge after the image of God which created him. Let's go to the last verse. Romans chapter 8, verse 28. While you are opening, let me quote verse 28. Open up your Bibles. Uh, all things work together for good to them that love God. To them who are called according to his purpose. Verse 29. For whom he did for you. For no. Okay, please continue reading. Romans 8, verse 8, 9. For whom he did, for no, he also did, for no, he 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 did, uh, let me give you some test. Where is God there in the scripture? He is. The same with 1 John 1. 1 John 5 20. His son. The father is there. Hebrews 1 1 2. His son. The father is there. The father is in Colossians 3 10. He could not put God, the father, out of the equation. Regarding the image, because he owns that image. Even Christ does not own originally own that image. Christ conformed to the image of God the Father after he overcame. And we are to be conformed to the image of his beloved Son. Okay, last question, Brother Mena. That is. Did he 
is ignoring whoever was talking to you was ignoring the his. And they might even not live extreme on this understanding. The his and the son are the same. Is the his and the son the same? No. The his is the father of the son. His son. So I hope we could be restored back. Yesterday I was in the ceremony. I talked about respiration. I hope you can uh, testify here about basic doctrines so that others English, so that others could watch it. Others could learn the basic things. And this, I, I was talking about the God here. I was differ, differentiating the Trinity and oneness. There's the extreme oneness, the biblical oneness, the apostles. So this is one aspect. For those who are not Trinitarians, they misunderstand His Son to be the same being. They read that, they focus on the Son, they focus on Christ, and they make Christ as God the Father Himself. Okay? Like what we are reading is a farce, it's nothing, it's use, uh, senseless. But God is not like that. It is human philosophy, uh, loyalty to the dogma that uh, caused the uh, misinterpretation. Now we move on to Revelation 10.7. In Revelation 10.7, how many minutes did I read? Okay, uh, in Revelation 10.7, open up your Bibles there. So, uh, keep writing your questions in. I might not have time to give instructions in the family. Okay, I'll just, just try to be good. Reverend? 27. 27. Okay, so just continue. I'll try to be brief for this Revelation 27. This week, Sister Jaya, give your appointment. Who is your chosen one? Revelation 27. But in the days of the Wait, follow Sister Erica when she is reading. Okay? Again. But in the days of the voice of the seven angels, when we shall be in the shop, and the mystery of God shall be finished, as he has been there of Israel and the prophets. Now, let's talk about the seven angel. I'm not going to talk about uh, how the seven angel would sound the trumpet after his voice. Whose voice was that? The voice of the seven angel. Who would sound? It's the same seventh angel. But the seventh angel has not yet sounded when the voice was already there. I'm not going to talk about that. We have talked that, we've talked that before. For those who wish to catch up, just ask questions. Even personally, one by one. Okay? I hope we can share this to others also. Now, the first six trumpets when they sounded, there was a voice. Get the picture? There was a voice. The voice, as it sounded, there was a message. But as it sounded, there was judgment. There was, let's read Revelation chapter 8, the last verse. So while you're opening up, uh, I was uh, yesterday, uh, well, there was a pastor that tried to present the uh, seven seals of the denomination of the family. I was surprised. When he talked about the seven seals, I was curious. What was he going to talk about? He just read chapter 8 down. The seven prophets. The seven seals opened up the seven prophets. Because it will take too long for me to delve into that. I'm just going to focus on the requested subject. How was Brother Branham not anointed by these seven angels, but just by one angel? Okay, let's continue. Okay, no, please read. Uh, Who is your chosen one? Okay, please read alongside Sister Yana. You have, you must teach your children to participate in that part. Okay. And I heard an angel cry, children, such as saying in a loud voice, Who 
Brother Chris, could you focus the video on that uh, tribulation period? So, notice there's a trumpet. You should get a new, a new copy. <laughs> you should uh, scan a new copy. Right? You notice in the first part there is uh, the trumpets. That's the time when the seven angels, all at the same time, would anoint a messenger. Actually, two messengers, two prophets, two witnesses. So it was not in the time of Brother Branham. It was an uncertain sound because it was about almost to open up all the mysteries of the seven. But, and the fourfold ministry will continue that message. They will receive the fullness. We will have the highest degree level of revelation before God takes us away on this earth. No other groups anymore after that will understand the depth of the revelation we could enjoy. When you start in the tribulation, the fullness of revelation is in judgment. We are living in an uncertain sound. You preach to the unbelievers, they will ignore you because there is no judgment. Do not uh, envy back the Pentecostal days where it's a supernatural service. And I will speak to someone, you they will be blinded and so like on that. Right now, uh, those things were just for the opening of the church. At the end of the church, the resumption of those supernatural gifts will be the days of the prophets. Right now, you can experience a measure of that gift, but not the fullness. You will have the fullness of the Word. There should be a change with it. It's not an outward display. The seventh seal will be a personal relationship between you and God. That's your very own relationship with the Word. Now, when the last week of Daniel starts, the fullness is not in the revelation of understanding. It's in judgment. It's in the supernatural power. They speak the word to existence. When they say it out, judgment will come on the earth. Right now, you speak the word to existence because it's prophecy. It will take place. It's not because you could just pull a squirrel out from the desert. They misunderstood Brother Branham's experience. We're not going to go back to the days of the Pentecostal where he need to declare healing outright. Uh, declare a supernatural event outright by your whip. No. You, you wait for the leading of God. God wants to have that person healed. He will reveal it to you. But not all the time. What we have right now is the word. What has to have a change today is your inner being. But at the beginning of the tribulation period, the whole world will experience judgment. The two prophets will declare judgment. And when that judgment is declared, something, happen, something happens to the world. And that is when the fullness of the seven angels pour down. All these of the seven angels would anoint the prophets and it's the judgment. Right now, you can enjoy the benefits of the seven angels by revelation in understanding, not revelation in manifestation. Because you're holding on to a promise. On the tribulation, it will go on to them. Because they will hear the word and receive immediate judgment. Right now, submit yourselves to the judgment of God for the church. I mentioned something last Sunday at the Brother Brother Lito, could you help me recall? Uh, I mentioned last Sunday about similarity of anointing, like John the Baptist, the Lion, you remember that? Could you say it out if you remember that? I want, I want, I wish to put it in record in English. Uh, what I just said last Sunday in the uh, I heard, uh, I heard uh, last night when you said last night or last Sunday? Last Sunday. Last Sunday night. Yeah. Last Sunday night. Uh, you 
the same rest of the questions. Okay, give the other papers to them. Just get, uh, read the first question of the agenda. Uh, question number one. Paano ko makuha ang second call? Ang writing, Mr. Len. Well, uh, we have training here. The discipleship is a dis discipline training. Okay? And you know what to do. Do you have regular reckoning? If not with me, do you have reckoning with others? As the Bible requires of us, do we admonish one another? Do you reckon one another? Or do you have gone relaxed in dealing with your children? Okay. Like your children are princesses. Prince and princesses. If your child could not get prayed by his own, and he's still looking forward to play, they're still prince and princesses. Galatians 4, 1, you skip that procedure of God. And that is not worthy. That's like Lucifer. Receiving everything without overcoming. Okay, next question. Green Reputation first thing. There was a sea of glass made of something that's big. Reputation 15 to the government as it were a sea of glass mingled with fire. Uh, the glass was caused by fire. Every time there's a... How do you make glass? Do you know where glass is being made? It's a sand. You fire it up in the furnace, it becomes glass. When you see a sea of glass, the earth passed through this furnace fire. There are many types of that. Before you become a transparent glass, you must pass through the fire. Look at the sand. Is the sand transparent? Yes or no? Buhangi. Is the sand transparent? Yes or no? No. Louder, everyone. No. Now, you have to be refined by fire order so that your life can be seen through and through. Okay? And of course, there is judgment, counseling, reckoning history for you uh, to become a transparent glass. When you see a glass represents the bride, represents the earth, then after the tribulation. Pag nag-asin na ang second time sa kapo na nilipin sa tendency, ano po ba ang pangunay ng pag-ilipin ng thunder ko yung pag-ilipin ng seals? The thunder is the revelator of the seals. And it was partially in the church ages, gradually in the process. That's why there's a progressive revelation ministry. There should be a walking in the light. There should not be a period pag ikama. There should be a continuation of the message. So, uh, the thunders opened up the mysteries, but it's still continuing today. There's an angel in the presence of God, seven angels in the presence of God, awaiting the seven star messengers. It's still anointing us today. If you've received that message, then you're receiving angels. Let me ask you something. Do you want the angels that anointed Wesley, Luther, uh, Kalumba, do you want those angels to anoint you? Then what should you do? The training will focus you in looking up their revelation of their life. History is part of God's revelation to us that we have to look up. Somebody said, oh, the history don't talk about it anymore. It's past. Do you know it? The fourth group of uh, teaching of at time here in uh, the Philippines. Do they already know those things they are ignoring? It's in the past, don't study them. As though it's the Old Testament. No, they were given to us. It's the book of Revelation. It's the seven churches. You don't understand everything. And you want to ignore that? You're being led blindly. Uh, you're, uh, you're following a man. You're following the word. If you follow it twice, you're going to open his love letter. You're going to study his love letter. You're going to share it. You're going to grow in revelation then. That's how the angel that anointed those star messengers will anoint you. Will be with you. Okay? Now you know what you should do. Okay, next. Bakit kailangan tatlo ng buho? Bakit hindi ginagawa sa inyo? 
Let's say, look for orphans in the church. Okay. Another. So, how about we have uh, 19 as a man? Okay, as a man? Uh, anointing from men is like praying others also. Of course, in the traditional church, they just pray in their hands, they just pray over. I'm not saying it's useless, but it's a small part. The main part is we teach, we pray, we evangelize. Even within ourselves. You transfer. Did you know that anointing of healing could be transferred? Do not think when you say it. Anointing is only from God. Or from man to man comes from God. No. Anointing could come from the devil. You could transfer hatred. You can transfer the Colatanism to the people, to your fellow brethren. So, anointing from man it depends on we should come from God's anointing or from the devil's anointing. From the end of the world. It's the end because of Malachi's prophecy. But uh, I'm talking of priest Malachi, I'm talking of the Malachi the Bible. Well, uh, I could not answer that because I committed a mistake before. I thought Pope John Paul II was the last Pope. And right now, it's two, two other popes after him. But Pope John Paul is very significant. The second, because the healing of the wounded head started there. Right now, he's, the Pope today is continuing the legacy of a well-traveled Pope. Okay? And as you well travel, people will talk to your side. They are, they are visitation and reckoning. Yes, they have more. Look at their activeness. Are you much more active than they? If they are not so, active, at least we should be on the same scale. The fire that they have should be the same fire we have. At least for the truth. They have the partial truth. They have their own level. So we have to manifest our truth. Otherwise, you're good for nothing so to be thrown out and trampled on your useless. Okay. Okay, next. What is the importance of being the game? Being very happy is you do not just memorize, you look for the evidence. Okay, you look for evidence of ours and theirs, and you are after the truth. You're not after any man. Because they have friends. But that should not dictate what is the truth. You love Jesus Christ, serve God through uh, focusing on the truth. You follow the truth. Many people will say they follow the truth, but how do you follow the truth? Brother Amos said, uh, when you follow truth, there must be a manifestation of your life. But he understood it as not listening to a voice. They still don't understand. You follow truth by not discriminating others' evidences. And you could spread out, take the bow, take the meat and, and throw away the bow. If you don't do that, then you're not going to refine. Do you know the refinement of the sand? You will remove the impurities of the sand until it becomes glass. Same thing with us. And the atoms in the sand will be reorganized to the point that it will become crystal clear, transparent. So, there must be something that we still reveal in our life. That is our lukewarmness in Nicolaitanism. Some of us are Nicolaitan, some of us are lukewarm. Why? Because we are not yet manifesting the Berean. How, how do you know? Because you're not yet asking questions about the basic things of God. Maybe a few ministers here too. How about the rest of the church? And as a, I would like to call the attention of the few ministers. You have a same vision. If you're a minister, you do not just look upon your own enjoyment. You look upon the needs of others. 
They might not even realize that thing. You must cause them to realize that thing. And you must always set up. We have children here. And where you're leaving them alone. <laughs> Sometimes I see some of the ministers trying to help them out. My focusing on do not, I uh, need to say, be consistent. Do not just do it just once or twice. Continue to do that. Continue ministering to others. Okay? Next time. If the prophet of this age has declared the mystery, do you think that the mystery was already finished? The mystery is already finished. And that's what others claim. All revelation has poured out to him. And we could not receive any further revelation. Of course, uh, it's not. Because, uh, yes, starting from the second and five to teaching here. Because God is invisible. Now under the king, eternal, immortal, invisible, the only wise God. God is invisible, how could we be seen? He could be seen through Jesus Christ. We do not see Jesus Christ. How could Jesus Christ be seen? Through us today, right now. Is Jesus Christ being seen in your life? Brother Rapra, is Jesus Christ being seen in your life? I cannot hear you. Yes. Yes. How about all of you? Is Jesus Christ being seen in your life? Yes. You can say it as a promise. Is Jesus Christ being seen in your life? Yes. Do not answer half heartedly. Answer very loudly. Amen. So that you can claim your reward. Yes. Is Jesus Christ being Woo! seen in your life? Yes. Even though you all still owe this, this is your favorite. Okay, last question. Last question. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Those who 
who have some uh, request in the Lord, just raise your hands. Those who have some problem, raise your hands. Let's close our eyes and pray. Guide your children to close their eyes and pray. Lord, we thank Thee for this revelation. We thank Thee for this opportunity. Lord, I, uh, we realize this preaching from the pulpit is just evangelism. Lord, I pray that this ministry will continue on in their seats. It would not just be an evangelism. It would also be an edification for each and every one of us. It would be discipleship for growth. Make us in our your image, Lord. Make us in the image of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ. What is that image in the last days? Do not just allow us to see, but allow us to experience it, Lord. Manifest it in our lives. Convict each and every one of us. Convict the parents, convict the ministers to have compassion over us. Lord, this progressive history last days. One of the few short days, years of our 